This is something, you guys wrote about this last year in Bloomberg yeah. Business Week. This is one of the funnest stories going on right now. It's awesome. Yeah, because... And you know I hate Gee Whiz Nito stories, but yeah. I love this. Well, look, if you're a science fiction fan, the idea of a flying car or, a, or even a small aircraft that takes off and lands vertically, that runs on electric power, that maybe one day is automated, is just cool. So a little background. Seven years ago, uh, a guy named Mark Moore at NASA wrote a paper, he's from Langley, about the feasibility of this. There's a Stanford professor named Elon Crew. He started talking to Larry Page. They eventually spawned two companies. One is the Arrow, one is Kitty Hawk. Ashley Vance and I wrote about these companies. They're, they're very secretive. Kitty Hawk. Kitty Hawk. Which is a, a noted name in the world of, of aviation. Of course, the Wright brothers. So uh, we, uh, we wrote about these two companies that are working on so-called flying cars. Uber, at the end of last year, wrote a white paper saying that they wanted to play a role in this new ecosystem of flying cars, not necessarily build a flying car themselves, at least not yet, but they think they have a role to play in changing regulations and in negotiating with suppliers and creating new, say, battery technology. The, my story today is they recently hired that guy from Langley, Mark Moore, who wrote the paper back in 2010, so adding a lot of firepower. This is very real. Silicon Valley is working on it. You will be soaring through the airs to your job one day, maybe not soon, but perhaps one day. Or not. Or not. Good, good, but I, good I, I do think it's really interesting that, that Uber is a company that has taken, and you, you write about this, but, but it's, it's a company that could have been all cloud. I don't mean cars in the clouds, but I mean a company that really takes the advantages of other people do the hardware, where where their cash is transacted. And instead, they're, they're doing things of, that they very easily could have left to others. And I wonder what it is about the mentality of this company that is, on one hand is all about leverage in the cloud and, and using Amazon Web Services on the back end and using computers, phone, consumers' phones on the front end, and, and, but still sinking a lot of money into development of actual hardware of the cars. Well, I think there are two explanations. One may be positive, one a little more cynical. The cynical explanation is they worry that this will happen without them, that Google would develop a driverless car or Z Aero or uh, Boeing would develop a flying right. car and they don't need Uber. So one, Uber needs to be involved in some way or they risk being left behind. Disintermediated. Yeah. On the other hand, you know, you invent the future you want to see. It's the same reason that Amazon, you know, developed the Alexa, developed the Kindle. Um, you know, if, if you want to, if you want to see a future, if you want to solve real problems in cities around transportation, then you have to be involved in advocating for it. And I think Uber has the resources to do that. Well, it's just interesting. They've, they've sucked up all the robot, the AI and robotics engineers out of Carnegie Mellon, right? Then they're sucking up these guys who are developing these. It's interesting, the, the cherry picking of academia. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's funny because Google, you know, got a lot of criticism for the big bets, right? Doing right. these things in-house and one by one they've been spinning them out. You know, driverless cars, actually now the Waymo division is, uh, is obviously very central to Google's plans and transportation, but this, these flying car projects they decided to do out of, out of right. outside the company. And now here Uber is developing at least some capability in-house.